I just saw this post that I just have to share with you guys. If you're out there job hunting, it answers a lot of questions about why the job market is so bad right now. Apparently, this guy's friend works as an HR manager at a huge corporation, and what she revealed is kind of disturbing. Here's the deal. Companies are literally paying games with job listings in order to see just how desperate people are to find work. We're talking about intentionally lowering salaries and stripping away benefits just to see how far they can push people before they stop applying. Check this out. In April 2003, her company actually posted a job in Atlanta offering a baseline 160k salary with benefits. Over 6,000 people applied. Now, there's no surprise there because we all know that everybody is applying to thousands of jobs even if they're unqualified for them. Then, in May, they lowered the salary to 130k. Still over 6,000 applicants. It's almost like people don't really care about the specs. They just want to apply to anything. In June, they thought, oh, we can actually get thousands of people to work for less and less. So they cut it again, this time to 100k. Now they got a lower number of applications down to 5,000 instead of 6,000. And then in July, they did the same thing and they cut the salary all the way down to 80k. And even with that, they still got 2,000 applications. That number was also because people get application fatigue, because many probably applied before and they saw that the company kept reducing the salary. But if it was a fresh job posting, probably would have gotten a lot more applications. But still, you know, 2,000 is a lot. And that's a 50% pay cut, but 2,000 people were still willing to take it. Again, those 2,000 people, most of them were probably not qualified to do the job, and many applied from overseas hoping for a sponsorship or hoping for remote work. But you can just assume that 3% of those people are actually good enough to do the job. So you can get maybe 60 applicants that might be able to do it. Then, in August, they thought, let's actually get rid of some benefits. Let's get rid of health insurance beyond basic coverage. Let's get rid of flexible work hours, employee discounts, and commuter perks. Now, guess what? Still over 2,000 people applied. And at this point, the company's like, hey, how low can we go? So they dropped the salary again to 70K and decided to stick with that. Once again, there was no significant drop in applicants. The company's experiment actually worked because people kept applying, even with worse pay and just with the basic healthcare insurance. Now, they spent six months just playing around to see how low can they go with the salaries and the benefits. And in those six months, actually, there were thousands of people waiting for a response and just hopeful that they're going to get an interview. But they didn't know that the company was just playing games to see how desperate people are when searching for work. And this is something that you need to know. That's why you don't get interviews, because those jobs that you keep applying for are just ghost jobs that are put out there to collect data. Data on how low you are willing to go in order to work. All companies know that with the huge levels of immigration, the jobs that have to be here can pay a lot less, even if the people that are applying for these jobs are less qualified. If you can get them to work for 50% less, then you can just get a current employee to train them and you just overwork the current employees that you have because they're going to work more because they need to keep their jobs. Check out my video on why nobody wants to work anymore because I get into a lot more details there. And with the huge levels of outsourcing to lower cost of living countries, the jobs that can be remote, they will probably go there. So you're going to be stuck with in-person jobs that will pay a lot less and with working conditions that will be worse than two or three years ago. And this happens in all countries, not just in the US or Canada or the UK. Even countries like India where you usually outsource to. There are countries with lower cost of living than India. So India will also outsource to those countries and so on. We're going to have a race to the bottom for remote work from one country to another. Check this out. Now, after all of this playing around for six months, they delayed hiring for two more months while they fired the person who had been earning 160k for the same job. That person was with the company for 14 years. Now, imagine that person will not find a new job that pays that much anymore because salary pricing is done at the margin. So it's clear that the new jobs like that will pay between 70 and 90k from now on. So they fired the person and they replaced them with somebody less qualified. In the meantime, the current employees probably had to do the extra work. And since the new hire was less qualified, they probably had to spend extra time to train them. But it doesn't matter because that's free extra labor for the company. And at the same time, the company also got a 90k discount. But it even gets worse because this isn't just a one-off thing. These companies are splitting full-time jobs into part-time jobs with no benefits and they're reporting them as new jobs created. Part-time jobs that cannot really sustain a comfortable living unless you actually get two of them. And that's not really comfortable either. This is relatively new in the last years because 
Companies realized that they can make it look like they're boosting the economy when they're actually just manipulating the numbers. And on top of that, some HR departments are even being asked to explore how many of these jobs could be outsourced overseas. So we might even see some jobs get stripped away of some responsibilities that can be done remote. So you're going to end up with even more part-time jobs that will be lower skill as the more high level skill responsibilities will be outsourced away. And this is important here because the high level skill jobs will be outsourced away and the low level skills that require you to be on site will pay less. And the only high level skill jobs that will remain will be for people that are needed to supervise outsource teams. Again, I talk about this in the nobody wants to work anymore video. The conclusion to all of this is that it's all about cost cutting while shareholders and CEOs keep the savings. And I think we're past the time where we could actually solve this. And I think it will need to get worse before these practices are reversed. But what do you think? What do we need to do in order to change these bad practices? Many people see the same job listing for months, if not over a year or more. They apply and apply and wonder why since they fit the entire description, the position remains open and listed. It's so maddening to see the same job listed forever. We all think, hey, I'm right here, I'm perfect for this. Over time, that constant rejection crushes the spirit and we are willing to accept less. This is a psychological battle. That's true. The more you interview and the more you get rejected, the more willing you are to accept less. Job search is exactly like dating because if you're successful, you're even more likely to be successful even when you're not actually looking. But the more you date and the more you interview and nothing leads to anything, you become jaded and then you become desperate and then both your dates and your interviewers, they actually start noticing that you're desperate and they start taking advantage of you. Everything is a game nowadays. People think that applying for jobs will actually make them successful. No, you actually have to be successful in a domain and then people have to know that you're actually good at something and then they will reach out because if you're out there just applying, you know, together with thousands of NPCs, you don't really stand out in any way and no wonder nobody wants you. Not because you're not good, because you can be actually incredible at your job, but it doesn't matter because they don't know and nobody wants to take chances nowadays, unless you're so cheap that it makes sense to just take advantage of you for a while. Short termism beats all. Just trying to get that bonus a few times before bouncing off to another company where they can point to their increased profits and why they should be paid more. This is true because this is a good way for top and middle management to get promoted. They cut costs by offshoring and then they get promoted before the whole thing starts having issues. And by the time the company realizes that they actually need better people to come in and actually solve those problems, that person is already cutting costs in another company and they're getting another promotion. The problem is finding these kinds of companies can be time consuming. It's pretty obvious that this system is bound to implode in the future if there are not massive reforms put in place at different levels of the government. I'd like to see this happen, but I don't think governments will do anything about these games that companies are playing because in the end it's a free market and if people are willing to work for less, the companies will pay less. Markets flip and I can't wait for this one to flip. When salaries go back up, these companies will have to deal with these employees quitting. I don't really think the salaries are going to go back up anytime soon because working remote at this scale actually changed everything. We've always had remote work, but in the last years, remote became the norm. So companies adapted and realized that outsourcing is a lot easier nowadays. And since globalization is in full effect, I think people in less developed countries are not that bad at working these jobs anymore. Yes, there are some issues with language barriers and with culture, but if you get an 80% cost cut, then many companies are making these decisions knowing that they're making a trade-off. Take this for example. This company, they laid us all off. We were making $18 per hour and they told us when they did it that they did it because they could pay six to eight people in India to do the job they pay one of us to do at the same rate. So essentially they outsourced to India to pay eight people $2.25 per hour each. Eight to one is a good rate because then you can just hire one business person or a tech lead in the US or in the UK in order to manage those people. You can just make that person responsible for the success of the project and then the problem is solved. The onshore person will actually have to carry the outsource team. He's going to have to train them and make sure that they deliver. But listen, there's a lot more to talk about, but what do you think about the solution to the current state of the job market? I would love to know how you see this going forward. Let me know down in the comments and if you like what you heard, please like, share and subscribe. Also, if you didn't like it, I thank you for listening this long and I will see you in the next one.